Okay, so we're talking about standard deviation of a probability distribution here in this video. Um, of course, again, discrete probability distribution. So we have 0, 1, and 2 as the possible outcomes. These are associated probabilities. And what we're looking to do is to find some measure of the standard deviation. So this is actually the variance, sigma squared. Remember, to get to the standard deviation, we simply take the square root of this. So take the square root of sigma squared to get sigma, and you have your standard deviation. I just wanted to look at it in terms of the variance first, because the square root sometimes makes it a little more cumbersome to look at. But this symbol, of course, is just saying to sum. What are they asking us to sum? They want us to sum this quantity here, x squared times p of x. And then from there, when we get that total, we're going to subtract off the mean value squared, or the expected value squared. That's it. That's the formula for variance. To get the standard deviation, you simply take the square root. So um, when we work out the problem, we'll actually do the variance initially, always, and then from there take the square root to get the standard deviation. So the standard deviation is the last step, and to do that we will simply apply a square root to the expression, and therefore remove the square symbol. Now it's the standard deviation. Okay, so we're going to work that out for an example problem quickly just to illustrate how it's done. It looks complicated, but it's actually quite easy. It's just uh, tedious. There's a lot of tedious steps to it, but it's not hard. Okay, so first thing you want to do is to get the average, because we need the average for the formula. To do the average, we do x times p of x. So let's go ahead and say x times p of x. And multiply straight across. So 0 times 0 0.10, of course, is 0. 1 times 0.30 is 0 0.30. 2 times 0 0.60 is 1.20. Okay, so at that point we have our um, list of values to sum to get our mean. So we'll do 0 0.30 plus 1.20, we get 1.50. That is our average then. So what we're going to say now is that our mean is 1.5. Okay, so let's just keep that off to the side here. So we need that information later, we're going to use that later. All right, so we have our 1.5, let's continue on. What we want to do is we want to get the next piece of information, which is x squared times p of x. So what I'm going to do is create the column. That's where we'll put these values. And we're going to need to sum that column. We're going to need that sum for the formula. But what I'm going to do before doing that is to square the x values so that they're ready to be multiplied by the px values, right? Because this is x squared times p of x. I need to calculate x squared first. Let's do that very quickly. If I square all the x's, I'll get 0, 1, 4. Right? That's the square of each x value. And once I have that list, I'm going to go ahead and multiply those values times these values. Right? So 0 times 0 0.10 is 0. And we're going to do 1 times the 0 0.30 and get 0 0.30. And then lastly, we're going to do 4 times 0 0.60. Make sure you grab the right number. Sometimes you're tempted to grab the x accidentally, because the first ones, the 0 and the 1, are often going to stay the same when you square them. Then, of course, this one um, will be the first one that's actually different from just multiplying by x times p of x. All right, so 4 times 0 0.60, and you're going to get 2.40. All right, so now you have x squared times p of x accomplished. We need to total that to get the number at the bottom. We need the total to work in our formula. So 0 and 0 0.30 are, of course, 0 0.30. These two added together give you 2.70. All right, so now we have our two values. Remember that this guy has a name. We can call that the sum, right? We added something up to get it. It was the sum. The sum of what? x squared times p of x. So x squared times p of x. That's what we have. OK, so this is the number we need for our formula. So let's start back with the variance formula. To get the variance, we use the sum of x squared times p of x minus the mean squared. So we can fill that in now. We know this value. The sum of x squared times p of x is given as 2.70. Then we'll subtract off the mean squared. Well, the mean was the 1.5, so 1.5 squared. That value is going to be the variance. OK, so if I do that, let's see what we get. 2.7 minus 1.5 squared. So we get 0.45. That means that our variance is 
four, five. Very good. All right, from there, to move down to the standard deviation, we just have to take the square root, right? Take the square root of the variance, and we'll end up with our standard deviation. OK, so if I take the square root of sigma squared, I end up with sigma, which in this case is going to be the square root of 0.45. And if I do that, we get approximately 0 0.67. One. That's rounded off to three decimal places. Of course, the decimal goes on and on, but 0 0.671 is the standard deviation.